In this video, we'll look at MintMate, we'll look at the trash and how it works with files, we'll look at the bottom panel, the menu that's on it, and a little bit to deal with the help that's provided by MintMate. First, let's create a folder, empty, and we can go ahead and move that to the trash. Then I'm going to go ahead and go to the trash, and I like the fact that the system knows you're in the trash as an empty trash button, doesn't allow you to create a folder or a document, done really a lot better than what we saw with KDE. I can even drag this out, and as you would expect, I can edit this file, which by the way has text that's much larger by default than what we saw in Mint KDE. This works much better. Close it, save it, permissions don't get messed up. It is a little odd that when I drag this back in, even when it's in the trash, I can go in and I can continue to edit it. Usually you don't want to edit files when they're in the trash. I could then go to Empty Trash, like we've seen elsewhere with Mint Mate. I can minimize it, and now, until I minimize this again and bring it back, I can't get this back. It's actually not 100% true. If I click off of it and then click on this, it also comes back. So I do have to sort of bring this back in a weird way with the minimize. A little strange right there. Not going to run into it that often. You generally won't be minimizing these type dialogues. It is something that they should fix. Let's go ahead. We'll empty the trash, and that works just fine. One thing with the minimization, when I minimize, notice there's an animation. When I restore to a window, no animation. Minimize animation, restore no animation. Maximize no animation, restore to a window no animation. Only when minimizing do I get any type of animation. Something else that I found is when I right click on this, they have all sorts of things dealing with what workspace is it on. That I guess is okay. It's not really designed though so that you're focused much on the workspace. Seems like all of these could be a sub menu here. But if I go ahead and I move this over to say workspace four, where did it go and how do I get there? There's no obvious way. If I go ahead and I go into here, I could type in workspace. Doesn't really come up with anything. There's no good workspace tool, anything that it's finding. What I did find though, is if I right click anywhere on here, I could add this anywhere. And I say add to panel at the very bottom. There is a workspace switcher. I can add to that, then close this. And now I can go ahead and get to my workspace. And if I want to move this back to workspace one, which is where I want it, I'll move myself to workspace one. And then since we won't be using this, I'll remove that from the panel. But for something that's not even there by default, all of this is devoted. Again, it would be better to have all of that in a sub menu. Let's go ahead and close this and we'll look at the main menu. When I click on it, one thing that I've noticed is when I mouse over these, they show me that I can click on them and they have a little bit of information. That's nice. When I click on these though, mousing over, automatically switches these things over. A little inconsistency, but it's not bad. These are sort of subfolders. Would be nice if they had little arrows here or something. And when I moused over this, if it looked like this right here, this would look different because it acts different. These over here work more like this. You'd think they would look the same. I also noticed with my favorites, I've added a couple here and it works a little funny. We have to scroll up and down. And if I add more, they actually get lost. You can only add so many things to your favorites and it doesn't work quite right. Other than that though, I think this menu works fairly well. If we go ahead and take a look at these right here, I could fairly quickly get to pretty much any application I want. I could add to my favorites. Limited number would be nice if I could have more, but that's okay. One thing though that I did question is why have a software manager and a package manager? This says install, remove, and upgrade software packages. Browse and install available software. Well, what's the difference? I said, well, let's find help. If I go to help, again, doesn't really help me at all. If I open this up, I could try going to help. There's no help for this system. But I did find, if I go into, let's go back to my favorites. If I go to a web browser, on their default page, it lists download the Linux Mint user guide. Excellent. Now, if we look at my desktop, I'm on Linux Mint 16. I click on this, the English is only in version 15. The French is only on version 9. Scrolling down, the Greek is on version 5. In fact, none of these give you an option for 16, except at the very bottom, we have Turkish version 16. So you don't really have an option to get an updated manual. And if you look at other ones here, other versions of Linux Mint, Cinnamon, all they have it in is Dutch. And it's current, but if you don't speak Dutch, you're out of luck. The interactive guide is only in French. The KDE guide is only in French and version 9. Ukrainian, really poorly done there. 
Well, let's go ahead. This is the newest one we have in English. I'll click on the PDF. And they have right at the top, pretty close to the top, a table of contents. Makes sense. And if we look here, the system menu. Well, that's what I'm looking at, I guess. I guess this is the system menu. Do they give any hints as to why they would have both the software manager and the package manager? Well, I see this on page 25 and scrolling down software management on page 35. Click on here, nothing. They don't even have their PDF set to have hyperlinks, but I could go ahead and get to page 25 fairly easily. Scroll down onto page 25. There is a section called system in the bottom left corner of the menu, okay. And it talks about the software manager. The software manager button launches the Linux Mint software manager. That makes sense. This program is the recommended way to install software. Okay, we'll talk about it more later on. Well, I'm not sure where that is. It doesn't say. But then they say there's the package manager. The package manager button launches an application called Synaptic. Well, why not have what it launches be the same name as what it's labeled as? That doesn't make much sense. The purpose of this application is to manage the packages that are installed on your computer. Well, how is that different than what we saw before? And if we scroll down, it really doesn't say anything. It goes into the control center. So then we're stuck going down to page 35. This will talk about software management. It just gives you a bunch of warnings without really telling you why they would have the two. First thing is it just gives you tons of defense for why they even have the package management they have. And a lot of it, frankly, is pretty weak. Let's take a look at their points. It is difficult or impossible to find out if the software has been tested to work with your operating system. That's a weakness of the Linux ecosystem in general. It is difficult or impossible to know how this software will interact with the other software installed on your system. Software shouldn't be affecting other software, maybe some drivers, things like that, but each thing should be contained and you shouldn't be worrying about how they're going to interact and fight with each other. It is difficult or impossible to know if you can place your trust that software from an unknown developer software will not cause any harm. That's a little oddly worded there, but pretty much you don't know if you can trust software. Well, that's true on any system you don't know, but if you're getting it from a reputable company, you should be fairly secure knowing that it's not going to cause harm to your system. And of course, there's virus and malware checkers to test that out. That's probably the strongest of the three, but it really does not speak well for the Linux ecosystem, and it doesn't answer our question. If we keep going down, they keep just going on with this defense of why they have this system. Don't get me wrong, I think repositories are great, but they don't need this much defense. Anyway, we keep going down. Finally, on page 40, we get to the software manager and then the menu. If you know what you're looking for, you don't need to launch anything. Well, you could just install it this way, but then they get into the Synaptic, which remember, to get to Synaptic, you have to go to software manager. They don't just call it Synaptic. If you want to install more than one application, so maybe that's why you would use it, they're just never really that clear. They say that the other one is the recommended one. This package manager is recommended. Software manager, if you want to install more than one piece of software, I guess, really would be nice to combine the two. Maybe having the package manager something that opens up Synaptic. I think that that's a little bit of a weakness there, but it's not that big of a weakness. It led me to finding, though, this bigger weakness that their user guide is just grossly outdated and there is no real help for Linux Mint.